with that spirited effort, we're going to be into more spirits. So, our speaker this morning is not only beautiful and gorgeous, she is talented, not only at singing, at baking, at cooking, um, it's too numerous to mention. So please help me welcome practitioner Carol Campbell this morning to the podium to give a spirited message. Thank you, my darling. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. And welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. You know where you are, right? <laughs> And to all those who are listening to us on the web, the World Wide Web, we welcome you to Kingston, Jamaica. It's beautiful here. Gorgeous flowers, warm, sunny. <laughs> so welcome. And in case you didn't know the words to I feel the spirit, When I Feel the Spirit that we just sang, that was written by Sandra. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. And yes, we feel the spirit. So, it's upon us. This is Christmas. This is Christmas. And who doesn't love Christmas? If I look out and I look like I don't see you, I can't see you with the glasses on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Christmas is a special time of year. And everybody seems to have an air of joy, gentleness, kindness, and a spirit of givingness, you know, that generosity. This is a time when we selflessly embody the qualities of spirit, those qualities that I just named. And without any effort, we feel this inner presence, which really is our true nature. And it feels good, doesn't it? You just feel good when you're in this essence of Christmasness. Now the story of Christmas in the Christian tradition is supposed to be a celebration of the Christ. You know, Christ, Mass. In the Caribbean when we play Mass, it's a grand celebration, yes? Now we all know that Christ is not Jesus' last name. It refers to an awakening awareness of that inner presence that expanded consciousness that is already in us, as us, call it God. The Christ is always seeking to interpret itself in better than we have known before. And to my mind, because we live in infinity, there is no point at which we can definitively state that we have arrived at Christhood. Now this story, while it may show up in many different languages and customs and cultures, is a singular story of awakening to a greater truth and a willingness to allow the Christ to find expression through our humanity. The Christ being that principle of awakened understanding of our relationship to God and unfolding are revealing little by little of a clearer understanding that spirit, as the essence of who we are, is not some deity outside of us, but who we are at the core. Joel Goldsmith in his book, Consciousness Unfolding, states, and I quote, there is no such thing as entertaining the Christ in consciousness and not having the fruitage of it. The presence of the Christ is manifest as the presence of improved conditions in our individual experience, end quote. So in thinking about my talk this morning, it occurred to me that there really are two very important women in the Christmas story, the story as we know it. But the focus has been almost entirely on one, on Mary, the mother of Jesus. The other woman is Elizabeth who we're told was Mary's cousin. And she is central to the Christmas story. Both of these women quite literally demonstrated the fruitage of entertaining the Christ in consciousness. Here's my take on the story. Here we have two women. One old, past her prime, Elizabeth. The other, young, 
ripe and virginal, Mary. The angel Gabriel first appears to Elizabeth and tells her she's going to get pregnant. Well, she laughs him to scorn and says, ah, this must be a joke. You know, she said, me oil and coal. <laughs> and in any case, um, Zach can't manage no more. <laughs> so Gabriel says, don't watch that, my friend. Things are going to happen for you. Well, before long, Elizabeth finds herself pregnant. And Zach, Zacharias is the father. Instead of staying in disbelief, because up until then, she was unable to have children, she rejoices that God has seen fit to, in her words, take away my reproach from men. Now, about six months later, Gabriel also has a visit with young Mary and tells her she's going to get pregnant. The poor girl is baffled. How can this be? I have not yet been with any man. Gabriel says, don't watch that, my girl. Big things are gone for you. You are going to give birth to something so special, it's going to change the world. And by the way, you remember your cousin Elizabeth, who everybody thought was barren? Well, she's pregnant now too, in her old age, no less. With God, nothing shall be impossible. Remember that. So with that, Mary responds, OK, God, here I am. If you think I'm worthy of this great thing, I'm willing. Do your thing. Well, do with me whatever you will. The story, as recounted in Luke chapter 1 and 2, goes on to tell us that Mary, now pregnant, goes to visit Elizabeth. And the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy at Mary's greeting. And Elizabeth declares, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Blessed is she that believed. And Mary responds in total surrender, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth rejoice in God my Savior. Now before I continue with the story in my words, I hope you're beginning to see the connection between these two women and their seemingly impossible circumstances regarding their pregnancies. Remember that one becomes pregnant by her husband, the old-fashioned way, the other by the Holy Spirit, a new, never-before-done way of doing and being. That's no coincidence. And any time a story as special as this is recounted in the Bible, you can bet there's more to it than just recording an event. Both women require a complete surrender to a higher truth and faith in the mystery of their own destinies, even if they don't understand what's going on, and the promised blessings represented by their unborn children. The important thing is they are both pregnant, filled with something new growing inside, waiting to burst forth into full realization at the right time. Now, in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, we're told that the name Elizabeth, or in Hebrew, Elisheba, means the inner conviction of the soul, that conviction that the working out of the law of life and truth is inevitable and sure. With God, nothing is impossible. The name Mary refers to that affectional and emotional phase of generic man's being, encompassing divine love and intuition. Remember, she didn't question Gabriel's announcements. Now, Gabriel, the angel, also has a deeper meaning, which is the masculine or wisdom phase of the divine in man. So the masculine contacts the feminine, the love phase, causing man to become aware of the Christ in himself and to bring that consciousness into expression. Remember that both masculine and feminine are necessary for the generation and the regeneration of both the physical and the metaphysical body, the procreation of life. And what about the children? Children always represent newness, a new birth in consciousness, the recognition of something hitherto unknown 
and greater than what has gone before. The children that these two women are carrying are very unique characters in the Bible. Elizabeth's child will be known as John the Baptist. John means the graciousness of God. Mary's child will be known as Jesus or Emmanuel, which translates to God with us. You may remember Elizabeth was the old woman, Mary the young virgin. So we can deduce that Elizabeth represents the old model, the Old Testament, and the energy that that carries. Vengeance, warring factors, presided over by a judgmental God out there somewhere. Mary must then represent the new model, the New Testament, that new message that Jesus would bring, that of love and hope and the surety that God was in us, as us, and good. We also know that in the Bible, John's ministry was recorded before Jesus' ministry. And we don't hear much about Jesus prior to his baptism by John, which took place when they were both about 30 years old, because they were in the same age group. What could this mean? John was busy baptizing people long before Jesus came along. His was the voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Through John's practice of baptism, he was preparing the consciousness of mankind for a new manifestation of the Christ presence. As he said in the, as in the Bible, it says, I baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, who shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. That's in Luke 3, chapter, six, chapter 3, verse 16. Now, baptism is a symbolic washing away of sin, and sin really is just error thinking. This demonstrates the cleansing of the soul. So Jesus shows up, and at his baptism, the heavens opened up rejoicing, and in his own consciousness dawns the awareness, the revelation that I am the beloved Son of God. And from then on, Jesus' entire ministry is about recognizing the Christ presence within. The birth of the Christ consciousness can only take place when we, like Elizabeth, like Mary, like Jesus, are willing to surrender our little selves in preparation for the expression of a higher idea. So what are some of the ways that we can be baptized with the Holy Ghost to prepare for this expression? They include, but are not limited to, one, maintaining a daily meditation practice. Two, participating in regular soul searching through journaling, for instance, and staying open to the influx of spirit, allowing rather than controlling. These are all ways our soul magnifies the Lord. Our soul is expanded through the law to be able to accept more and ever more of spirit until we are filled to overflowing, saturated with the idea of a higher truth which must and does find expression as the birth of the Christ consciousness, the conscious awareness of the indwelling spirit. So this is Christmas, the celebration of the fruitage of the qualities of God in us, as us, the recognition and acceptance of the gifts revealed in us and through us. I have an affirmation for you to say. I'll read it and then you can repeat it. I'll break it down for you. I am the gift of beauty dynamic talent, joy, love, and prospering abundance, which has been given through the Father's good pleasure. I share these gifts with ease and love. I am the beauty, oh, I am the gift of beauty. I am the gift of beauty. Dynamic talent, dynamic talent. 
joy, love, and prospering abundance. Joy, love, and prospering abundance. Which has been given through the Father's good pleasure. Which has been given through the Father's good pleasure. I share these gifts with ease and love. I share these gifts with ease and love. And so it is. So how do we know if we're revealing the Christ in us? Ernest Holmes says, and I quote, if each day we are expressing more life, we're going in the right direction, end quote. The gifts of life more abundant were given in the beginning. The gifts of spirit are already within us, awaiting our recognition. So go ahead, open the gift, and have an amazing Christmas, a celebration of the Christ within. Merry Christmas. Wow. <laughs>